Hi, I'm Jill Chivers from Shop Your Wardrobe. And I'm Imogen Lamport from Inside Out Styles. We've been asked a question about how much skin is appropriate to show in the workplace. And I think this is a really fascinating topic. Mm. And it can be quite sensitive. It can be downright contentious for and some people. And people have very strong views about this. Um, and mm -hmm. we are aware of this. But we're going to talk to you on a, what has been found in studies. Yeah. Um, and the reasons why, you know, you might want to think about the kind of level of skin you show in the workplace. Mm. And, and one of the things I, I found very interesting recently, I'm doing some work with a, a business and they're rewriting their dress code. And, you know, and, and their section for men was wear a suit and a tie and a shirt. Their section for women was like raft of things. Mm. And I said, well, let's look at this. Mm. A man is covered up. In a suit and a tie and a shirt, you can see his head, mm. you can see his hands. That is the only skin he shows. Yeah. Yet, you know, do we want to have toes out? Do we want to have, like, what is the, the difference? Mm. I mean, in many ways, he's shrouded. Yeah. And women, it's true, the choices in women's clothing are much, much broader. Mm. And I, I, part of the issue is that suggests to women that their choices in the workplace are as broad as the options in the stores and that may or may not be the case it's certainly something to look at when you look at how the men are attired and i guess the level of professionalism in yes. what they're wearing and when you look at what how senior women in an organization are matching that that'll give you some clue to where that organization is at in terms of its overall approach to that and i think that's always a helpful thing to say um, how are those who are successful in this business dressing and you can take your cues from them it's not the only way to go but it certainly can give you really useful information if those folks have been around and they're doing really well yeah. and they're leading the business then you're certainly not going to go yes. wrong taking some cues from them. On the whole. And one of the reasons why you want to be wary of showing too much skin is that skin is exciting. Yeah. When we think about, you know, the, the kind of, let's talk about, you know, your 16-year-old daughter wants to go out at night in a mini skirt and plunging neckline, and you're, I don't want her out in that. <laughs> Because you know that skin is exciting. Yes, it's going to attract a lot of attention. It's going to attract attention. Mm. And the thing about is where do we see people with a lot of skin showing? Mm. It's on the beach. Mm. Uh, and it's strippers. <laughs> right. Okay. You know, yeah. It's underwear <laughs> catalogues. It's, you know, this is where, you know, it's that whole thing when we think about that when people say, sport, you know. Sport. A lot of sport. You see lots of skin, skin too. Sport. Yeah. But part of that's about movement. Yes, absolutely. And heat that yes. you, you kind of want to stay cool. And practicality. And practicality. Mm. But that's where it's about the movement, heat and, and staying cool. Yeah. Less about the I'm showing skin to excite someone. I was really interested when I started learning about this that the human eye is attracted to skin. It can't help it. It's one of those inbuilt things that um, where human skin is available, whether it's hands, faces, the back of the neck, cleavage, ankles, does, it doesn't matter. Our eyes are drawn to it. It's part of what makes us human. And so when we are presented with that and it's, say, inappropriate for us to look, we're in, I don't know, we're out, out, out in public and, yes. and we see something, it takes an effort to draw our eyes away oh, wow. from that. And, and it's interesting because I've, I've worked with some clients who, where, you know, it's someone who said, look, this person in our office, she's just showing too much cleavage um, or a little too much leg, whatever it might be. Mm. And, and they'll say, I'm a woman and I don't know where to look. Right. And a lot of male managers have said it makes me incredibly uncomfortable because I don't, I know it's not appropriate to look, but it is. It's that sort of thing where you go like, oh, my eyes are drawn and then I'm going, but where am I supposed to be looking? Because this is really uncomfortable. Mm. So in many ways, when you think about what's appropriate is, is this actually making other people uncomfortable? And are you okay with that? Yeah. Um, is it, and, and the reason why there's appropriateness is that more clothes are like armor. Yeah. They create a barrier, and there has been research that they found that when workplaces went casual mm. in their dress codes, mm. sexual harassment claims went up. Wow. And that is because when you are dressed like my friend who I see on the weekend, I think I can be more inappropriate. Right. Versus when you are in your suit of armor, mm. then I feel like there's, it is more because we are much more yang appearance. Mm. So when we're thinking about the yin and the yang, mm. that more clothes equals Stay away from me. 
I've got more clothes on. I'm not naked. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not part naked. I'm not in a nightclub. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, I am more covered up. Yeah. Which means I'm more armoured up. Yeah. And so, therefore, it's the you need to think a little bit more about what you say and what's appropriate versus what's not appropriate. Yeah. Um. So, so there is that sort of kind of element, and where we want to think about well. What am I wanting to communicate? Mm. And, and it really, much of this also comes down to that kind of some of those yin and yang elements mm. that, you know, even the more structured clothes mm. say, I am more formal versus the less structured clothes say, I'm more approachable. Yeah. Yeah. The really interesting book called The Language of Clothes and talks about how um, that skinhead kind of look with the, with the mohawk and the ripped clothing and a lot of studded stuff is the equivalent of swearing, that if it was converted into language, that that's what it would yes. be. And, and that, that whole idea that language, that clothing communicates for us is one that I know some people really rail against. And the whole idea that too much skin signals something or communicates yes. something or is a distraction, I understand, you understand, yes. we understand can be a confronting idea and one that some people just wish was not true and we might even wish yes. that it wasn't true but in the world that that we mm. believe exists it does signal something mm. and and your awareness of that is a big part of the yes. equation to say what am I signaling what would I like to signal in and, this situation and this is something too often that younger women often think well why can't I wear this or that or something else you know yeah. it's my body and I'm going to show it off Right. And, but then they would hate to think, or most of them would not like to think that, you know, their manager is thinking things about them that they, it wouldn't make them comfortable if they, and they wouldn't want them to say it out loud. And this is about... because of the way they're sorry. dressed. Yeah. And this is about understanding the nature of consequence, understanding mm. the nature of impact, and that it's almost impossible to be impact-free in the world. Yes. We're communicating, we're, we're bumping up against yes. other people, we're having an impact, some of which we're aware of, a lot of which we're not aware yes. of, some of which we would choose, a lot of it which we just wasn't happening, but that's part of the nature of human interaction. And being aware that the way you are dressing and how much skin you are showing is having an impact uh, to me, is is part of recognising mm. reality. So when you're thinking about, well, how much skin is appropriate in my workplace, look at what the men are wearing. Mm. So if the men are wearing suits and ties and shirts down to the sleeves, then you should think I should be pretty covered up down to the knees, probably cover your shoulders. Um, you know, you can show your forearms, but I would be covering the shoulders. Um, and definitely no low cleavage. Mm. And then if you say, if the men are wearing polo shirts, Mm. then I could do a sleeveless dress. You know, mm. I'm, you know, I'm still go, just don't do the cleavage. It's just not right at the workplace. Mm. Um, but you, you can get away, but you might be going, I can have an open shoe there rather than having to have a closed shoe. Yeah. So it's that kind of thing in many ways, take your cues from if what is acceptable for men, mm. then it gives you an idea of what is the acceptable level of dress often for the women in the workplace yeah. and and look and as much as you might think but I rail against how dare anybody tell me mm. we're reading clothes and if you're watching a movie if you're watching mm. a TV show a character's whole persona and their personality and everything about them is told through their clothes oh, so if I want so to is... turn some if I want mm. to turn a man into a nerd mm. what do I do you know I make his pants a little bit too short yeah I maybe put him in a short sleeve shirt instead of a full length shirt. I might even put a bow tie on him if I want to make him kind of eccentric. Yeah. I'll put in a whole lot of pens in his top pocket. Right. And things will be a little bit ill-fitting and not great colours. Well, the costume designer for Fatal Attraction, um, I watched uh, a piece on him talking about what he did with Glenn Close's character as she developed where she became more and more unhinged and, yes. and fervent in her pursuit of Michael Douglas's character and the things that he did with her hair and her makeup and her clothing to convey these things. Now, when you're watching that, you may not be aware of, you know, here's a milestone where things have shifted, yes. but it supports the, the direction mm -hmm. that that character yes goes in which and she's a pretty polarizing yes. character uh, but that's so fascinating to me that in the movies yes. so much attention is paid to this and that was a key part of us believing how this character that, uh, how unhinged uh, she's become yes yes her evolution or devolution in that particular movie and and uh, that's useful for us because 
close signal. Yeah. And so many characters I can think of, I think it's Sandra Bullock in, I think it's called 28 Days, where she ends up going to a rehab facility. Mm. You know, and the first thing that says, my life is out of control, is untucked, disheveled, sweatpants, active wear, you know, uh, you know, poor grooming. Yeah. And they all go, my life is out of control. Yes. Because the clothes are saying that. Yeah. She doesn't have to say, I'm out of control. control. It, she just the looks the doing look. it for her. And that's why <laughs> there's so much attention paid in movies. And if you actually watch TV and movie characters and actually notice what their clothes are saying, then you can really learn to interpret clothes yeah. much more because wardrobe people in movies are incredibly skilled yes. at actually communicating so much just through costume. Yeah. So hopefully this has given you some a few more ideas about what may or may not be appropriate and just why, why there are restrictions, why your boss may not say that that's appropriate, why it's not in a dress code. Yeah. Um, just because I know it can feel, sometimes it feels unfair. Yeah. That I should be allowed to wear whatever I like. Mm. Um, but it's, it's, you know, there's an element always of, you want the people around you to feel comfortable. Mm. And I think that's important. Mm. Um, and, but also, too, is you want to feel comfortable as well. Yeah. Um, and, and you also want to understand, how am I communicating? And I want to communicate the best message possible. I want my goals and outcomes to be the things that are achieved. Yes. And so sometimes people do detriment to themselves by saying, well, I can just wear this anyway, mm. when in fact they're communicating in a negative way and they just don't realize it. Yeah, and so awareness is the first step, and, and from there, um, you're doing a bit of trial and error, do, doing some thinking about what your goals and your objectives are, and, and how you can use clothing as one tool in a toolbox of many things, but it definitely is a tool that you can use to help get you where you want to go, signal what you want to signal, communicate with the people you want to communicate with, and, and connect in a way that is authentic for you.